Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be another principle tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a slider that actually works. And the reason I'm making this tutorial is because for one of my clients, we actually had to demo a prototype of a product that we're shipping. And there couldn't be any hiccups in terms of how this prototype functions. And I've seen a lot of tutorials on YouTube for how to make sliders, but they don't actually work like perfectly. Like the knob kind of exceeds the slider track. And I'm gonna show you kind of both ways to make these. I'll show you the way that I've seen on the internet that people are making these and I'll show you the better way to do these just to make sure that they work exactly how they're supposed to. So let's just start by designing the slider here. So I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle and we'll make this a light gray. This is gonna be like the track part of the slider. So let's call this track and then I'm gonna duplicate this layer and then I'm gonna call this layer fill. This is gonna be the part that fills up and we'll just make this like a darker gray. And let's select both of these layers and just give this a little radius to make it look nice. And we can group these guys and just call these slider. And I'm gonna select clip sub layers. And then with the fill layer selected, I'm just gonna move it to the left. So this is gonna be the part of the slider that like fills up when you slide the knob. So let's just position it all the way at the start. And as you see the part that's like overhanging is getting clipped off because we checked that box that says clip sub layers. So now let's draw a knob just using the circle tool. And this is gonna be the part that we actually slide. And we'll position that right around here. And let's just call this knob. So the way people typically will do the slider interaction is they will select the knob and they will change the horizontal drop down to drag so they can like freeform drag this knob on the X axis. And then they will drive the X position of the fill by the knob. So what they'll typically do is they'll open the driver window and they will select the fill layer and they create keyframes for that fill layer for center X. So it's X position. And then when the knob gets here, they just move the fill all the way to the end. So like this. And as you see that pair keyframe was created. So this is sort of what's happening, right? So they, they have a slider, but as you notice, the knob continues off of that bounding box. It doesn't stop where it's supposed to. And as you can imagine, if we were presenting in front of a bunch of stakeholders for an important product launch, this would be really embarrassing if this was happening. So we wanna make sure that the knob stops where it's supposed to. So I'm gonna show you a better way to do this. So let's just get rid of all the drivers we just made. All those keyframes, we don't need them. And I'm actually gonna take this knob and just change this back to static. So the trick here is we just create a layer on top of the knob. And this is gonna be like an invisible layer that we're gonna to use to drive the knob and the fill by. So I'm just gonna take the opacity down just so you can see what's underneath, like so. And we'll just name this layer invisible layer. So now what we're gonna do is drive the X position of the knob and the fill by this invisible layer. So let's take this invisible layer and change its horizontal drop down to drag. So now we can drag the invisible layer and we're gonna just drive the knob and the fill by the invisible layer. So actually at this initial position, we have to make sure that this fill is set back to its initial position. So let's just move that all the way to the end, like so. So now let's just drive the fill and the knob by the drag X position of this invisible layer. So let's select, let's select the knob and the fill. Let's add keyframes for their center X. And once we slide the invisible layer all the way here, we'll just reposition the knob and the fill. So what we're doing here is we're setting the boundary of the knob and the fill so they can't exceed this track. So now when I go to drag, this invisible layer, the knob stops exactly where it's supposed to. So we're ensuring that we can't possibly exceed that boundary. And what we can do now is just take this invisible layer and we'll take the 
fill opacity all the way down to zero. And here we go, here's our final result. It works exactly how it's supposed to function. So a cool little principle hack that you guys can leverage in your designs. You know, the first way I showed you would probably work 99% of the time for most of your use cases. Like maybe you're just trying to create a dribble shot or quickly validate an idea to share with the developer before they start building it. But sometimes you really need your prototype to function exactly how it's supposed to. So this method is just gonna ensure that you know, you're not embarrassing yourself in front of a lot of people, or maybe you're putting this in the hands of users for testing. You just don't want to leave any questions up in the air um, about how something's supposed to function. So yeah, figured I'd share this. Hopefully some of you guys found this valuable and I will uh, talk to you guys in the next video.